Based on the latest tax reform, we know that the estate, gift, and generation skipping tax exemptions are going to be at $10 million per person adjusted for inflation. Compare that to the previous law, which would have been $5 million per person adjusted for inflation. Granted, there is a January 1st, 2026 sunset on these laws, but I think the question is, what should we be considering based on these changes? Well, I think the first thing that families should be looking at is the formula clauses that exist within their wills and within their revocable trust documents. These formula clauses are often tied to whatever the estate tax exemption is at the time of one's passing. And so now that the exemption amount has doubled, their family should really be taking another look at those formula clauses to make sure that that new exemption amount isn't creating an unintended effect within their estate plan. Another thing that families should be looking at is the income tax efficiency of their estate plan. Now, so many fewer families will be subject to the estate tax. There may be an opportunity to save income taxes by taking advantage of adjustments to cost basis upon passing. Uh, I'm glad you said that. And as, as you're mentioning these tips, I'm thinking flexibility is so important. And, and granted, it's always been in estate planning, but even more so now, especially with that January 1st, 2026 sunset, we know that the laws we have today aren't permanent. So I guess I think we just need to make sure, regardless of what the exemption will be, the document provides some flexibility. Absolutely. And you mentioned the 2026 sunset. And so we have a situation now where each individual has over $11 million of estate tax exemption, but in eight years they might go back to only having $5.5 million of exemption. And so this creates this limited window of opportunity where families who are going to be subject to the estate tax even under the new doubled exemption amounts, this is really an opportunity for them to make lifetime transfers to utilize that excess estate tax exemption that they now have available. This is especially advantageous for your family business owners because they might have been trying to transfer ownership of that business to the next generation, but might have been limited by potential gift tax consequences. And so a lot of family business owners have actually purchased life insurance in order to provide for liquidity for a potential estate tax. And so now that we have these double exemptions m amounts, how does that affect those who have purchased policies for estate tax liquidity? It's a great question. And I think once upon a time, we might have said, if it was only purchased for estate tax liquidity purposes, now that we have this doubled exemption, roughly, do we need this policy? Should we just let it go and preserve the cash flow from the premium? And the answer is that can be the right choice. But I do think that there's a lot of non-estate tax driven reasons why somebody might have purchased the life insurance in the first place. It could be that it's attractive economically from a rate of return perspective. It could be that it functions as a good investment. Cash on cash returns in insurance policies can be attractive in today's interest rate environment. It also often provides a great means of business succession planning. When somebody passes away, the cash provided by the death benefit typically can allow for the purchase of the ownership interest of the deceased. And so we have all of these great reasons why life insurance could be needed other than that estate tax purpose. When it comes down to it, I think the answer is, if you're considering canceling a policy or even just wanna confirm that it makes sense, you should get a professional involved. Yeah, and I think the most important thing for families to remember is that while fewer families are going to be subject to the estate tax, every family needs to have a solid estate plan. There will continue to be non-tax reasons for trust planning, such as asset protection, special needs planning, family governance, and education. And so I think that this new law has created a great opportunity for families to go back and take another look at their estate plan and make sure that it's still accomplishing their goals and objectives within the context of the new legislation. Thank you.